Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Bold. Guys, in this video, we'll learn about web hooks in Salesforce. I'll show you what are web hooks and how you can create one in your Salesforce org and how to use it. Let's take an example. So let's say you need to get data from a server and you need to get it only whenever the data is updated on the server. So basically to get the data, you will be doing an API callout. And by doing that API callout, you need to check if the data is updated, then return the data or else return null, right? So for that, you need to, you know, hit the API request again and again to check the data. You need to ask the server, hey, do you have new data? No, return null. Do you have new data? No, return null. If you have new data, then return the value. Instead of hitting the API calls after a time span again and again, we will give that server a URL and we will tell them, hey, whenever you are having the data, give us a ping on this uh, URL and we will get it. So these are basically webhooks. So I'll show you how you can create a webhook in Salesforce and how you can send a notification using these webhooks to get these kind of requirement or data from any other server. So let's start today's video, guys. I'm Kapil, your host, and you're watching Salesforce Bold. Right, guys, let's start today's video. So guys, basically webhooks and APIs are kind of, you know, similar things. In APIs, you are requesting to the server again and again. And in webhooks, you are just giving them a URL so that they can, you know, uh, send you a notification or data over that URL whenever they are having it. Okay, so let's understand it using an example. Okay, so let's say uh, there is a source from where you need to get the data. So this is your source. Okay, and this is the target where we are planning to get the data. But the data from the source to target won't be coming directly, there's a server in between. Okay, so this is the server. Okay, so basically source will be sending data to server. And then server will be sending data to target. Actually, server won't be sending data. Target needs to receive data from server. So for that, target need to hit the API and using that API response, server will be sending data back to the target, right? So as of now, let's consider there is no webhook, okay? Now to check the data, if data exists or not, you need to hit multiple request to this uh, server again and again, right? So there will be multiple requests to the server to just to check like if the data exists or not. So now instead of hitting multiple API requests because each API request will cost you something, correct? So instead of that, we'll create a webhook URL. We'll create webhook URL and we will give this webhook URL to the server and we will tell them, uh, so whenever you are having the data, just give us a hit on this URL as a notification. So basically, the target will be notified whenever server is having data. So server will be sending the webhook request uh, from the server to target using a webhook URL. And once the target will receive the request, after that target will be able to do the API callout to the server again and uh, target will be getting data. So this could be a good way to, you know, uh, notify the target or notify the system that uh, there is some new data available uh, that you can fetch okay so in today's video i'll show you how you can create a webhook in salesforce and uh, how you can utilize it so for that first you need to create an apex class where you are having where you will be having a rest api call okay let me show it to you how to do that so i have already created it and in this video i'll explain the overall functionality how it is going to be so first i'll open the apex so this is my apex this is a pretty basic thing and uh, here i have added the rest resource where i have added my url of the uh, webhook okay so this will be basically my webhook url so i have added slash api slash invoke webhook here okay and this is going to be a global class with the http post callout here Okay, because uh, this is going to generate a URL where people will be uh, sending a notification or if you want some data also, they can give you that as well. So this is a very good example of it, but also on the other end, this is very, very basic guys. So 
I'm not even following best practice to have try catch block and all those things here because this is just to show you a demo of webhook and uh, show it to you how you are how you can create it in your Salesforce org. Okay. Because if I'm going to create everything from scratch using best practices, this video is not going to end in 60 minutes. Okay. So here I have just created a REST request and uh, I'm requesting it uh, using REST context or request. And here I am creating one response as well for the same. Okay. And once you will get the webhook, once you will get the notification from the server, after that you can perform your action accordingly. In the current example which I showed you, in that case you need to hit the API call to fetch the data, right? So to create a webhook URL, what you need to do is first you need to create a site in Salesforce. So for that, I'll quickly open my org. Unfortunately, you can only create one site in the developer org because that's why I won't be able to show it to you again, the configuration, but uh, I can do edit and show it to you. I thought of creating it from the scratch, but unfortunately this limitations can't help it here. So this is the site label. It is bold hook and uh, site contact. You can just add any details here. Site template, it was by default. This uh, active site homepage was a mandatory field. So for demo, I have just added idea homepage. You can add your custom homepage as well here. Like for example, I'm adding under construction page here right now. Okay. Now you need to save it. And this is going to be the default web address, what you're going to use. Okay. So we'll copy it from here and save it. Okay. So basically you need a open site where these kind of servers or from wherever you are expecting the data, they can you know uh, hit the request okay another very important thing uh, you need to do here is uh, you need to provide the apex access to the user as well okay so make sure your user is having access to your apex file okay for that you can simply go in public access settings And here, if you will see enable Apex classes, I'm already having my Apex class, which is webhook handler. Okay. Now on the browser, if I'll try to paste this URL here. Okay. Now after that, you need to add your webhook URL as well, which is slash API slash invoke webhook. So the complete URL is going to be services, then Apex rest, then your URL, which is slash API slash invoke webhook. If you're having multiple webhook, you can have slash API slash webhooks, then you can add your webhooks name. Okay. So now just to test it, you can hit the empty get request from the URL. Now you see this is showing invalid session, session expire or invalid because to access the URL, you need a session ID. You need some kind of authentication, right? Now to create the authentication, you need to create a named credential. So I'll quickly create a name credential with no authentication right now. Okay. And for that, I have already created one external credentials as well with no authentication basically i'll quickly show it to you so see the label name and authentication protocol is no authentication in the actual in the real world basically you should be selecting the oauth 2.0 method or basic authentication at least it is not going to be no authentication okay so i'll quickly go back to name credential i'll create one Salesforce webhook. Okay. I'll copy it and paste it here. Now the URL, the URL is going to be the complete URL of your webhook. Here it is. External, I'll select webhook credentials. You may be sending formulas in HTTP header. Let's allow this HTTP body as well and save it. Okay, now the name credentials are saved just to give an empty request. You can simply refresh the same page again. Okay, just a second. So named credentials are saved, but still they're showing invalid session ID. I think the site is not active. So if I'll go back to sites. 
yes it was not active so you need to make sure it is active okay now if i will refresh this url it is showing method not allowed that means the connection is not failing the method that we are using to hit the webhook url is not correct okay now to to show you how you can hit this webhook url what you can do is you can simply use postman as an in this scenario we can consider it as an uh, external server which should be sending us this uh, request if it is having data okay so we'll consider postman as a server in our case okay so for that you can simply log into postman okay i'll go to my workspace and in api scenario testing let's consider this one success user creation one okay now here in the post i will be having this url okay and i will hit send so this is basically my webhook url where postman as an external server will be sending a notification okay and based on that notification you can perform any action so i'll click on send and uh, you can see the status is 200 okay that means the notification has been sent to the webhook webhook must have received it and if you are having any action in that webhook code it will be performing that action to show you an example what we can do is so here we are just having this uh, system.debug we won't be able to see it so what we can do is uh, we can create an account here first let me show you the existing accounts okay so this is my account list where I'm having around 22 items. Okay. Now in my code, I'll create a new account. Okay. Again, this is just for the demonstration purpose, guys. This is not an actual scenario. You need to follow all the best practices and the proper business use cases. Okay. New account. Okay. I'll just add name. Maybe. Uh, webhook account one okay so this is my account creation here and i will simply insert the account and upload it okay it is deploying to the org okay it is deployed successfully now what we'll do, we'll again go to Postman, okay, and we will hit the same request again. So again, you can see it is success here. This is my account list view. I'll refresh it. So previous account was 22. Now you can see there are 23 items. So that webhook account should be here. I think hiding behind my picture. Yeah this is the one webhook account so this one we created using that webhook apex class that we have created right so the same way in, i mean this was just for the demo that's why i have just created an account if you will go by actual scenario so basically whenever you are receiving a request you can hit the api call out now right so let's say same webhook technologies uh, are being used by multiple messaging systems as well so in messaging system or chatting system, basically, whenever someone is sending you a chat, you are receiving it instantly in your chat box, right? That means to receive the chat instantly and it is not like the chat has been sent to you directly. It is going to a server first and then from a server, uh, your chat bot is fetching it, right? So if your chat bot is not using webhooks, then your chat bot needs to send the request to that server again and again, right? just to see if there are some new data. If not, it will just return null. If it is there, then it will show you the chat message, right? So you must have seen these WhatsApp chats, like how quick it is. You will be sending it and the immediate second you will be receiving it. So if the chatbots are not using webhooks and they need to check the data, maybe in every second, right? They need to hit the API request every second and try to fetch the data, but the benefit of using webhooks are so whenever you are sending a message 
to the server, the server will be sending the notification to the target, right? That I'm having a new message for you, please fetch it. Then the target can fetch that message using APIs uh, or any other uh, thing, you know, to their uh, chat, chat window and show it to user. So this is the main benefit of uh, using these kind of web books in any integration mechanism or platform, okay? So that it is for today, guys. Uh, and uh, as always, I'll be having the complete code on my website, which is salesforcepole.com. So if you would like to get the complete code of this uh, Apex class, then make sure to check the uh, latest post on that blog. So that it is for today, guys. If you like today's video, a subscribe to the channel will be awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.